If there is a new world order, there must also be an old world order, which is very important to understand the new world order. The old world order was the feudal aristocratic system of kings, queens, dukes, counts and earls whose property we were. They took our women in the prime noctus or first rite on the first wedding night and forced our women to sleep with the Lord to spread their pharaonic genetics. They owned all the land, all the cattle and had all the power being enforced by their knights who are now the police and the blue octagon army. So you think they just left it all and just vanished? No. It was this old world order which became the new world order because the aristocracy were having too many internal wars where all of them wanted to be king or lord of the castle and there were more and more of them. So it was decided that any one of them could be the king for a period of four years elected by their slaves, the demos in Greek. And so democracy was born. And because there were too many uprisings and revolutions going on, they decided to become invisible and hide in secret Freemason lodges, being the reason that Freemasons are still attracted to swords, castles, ancient rituals and pharaonic symbols. Especially communism and the Russian revolution became a real threat to them, killing all the royals and tsars. This is why in fact a counterpart had to be invented to defeat the threat, Nazism. And over these two they had the western world and privileged capitalism of their financial elite to finally defeat both communism and Nazism. And now they just smile and say, have a nice day. Next to this, there's also the highly organized Templars of Octagon and their base Switzerland, where all the money is. The Templars were like young, wild, revolutionary aristocrats, rebels like, who had to fight for their kingdom, as they were only second or third sons, who therefore had no rights, and it was they who finally came up with the idea of democracy and Freemasonry, thus putting the old monarchies and the French king Philippe le Bel in rage, because he didn't want to give up his kingdom to the new system of the new world order, where all these pharaohs could have a chance. So the Templars founded Switzerland, taking their Templars treasure with them. And today we still belong to them as their slaves and that is why we have a passport or ID with a number on it being our registered slave number of the aristocracy which we have to show every time their police knights of octagon commands us to control the flock. Not even the passport itself belongs to us but it's the property of the state and aristocracy. Neither our children belong to us, they are the property of the state, whom they can take away from us whenever they please, as being their future flock of slave stock. They can arrest you whenever they want, they can put you in prison whenever they please. This is what I had to find out in Octogon, Switzerland, that we are their property, who can steer our lives through terror, lies and injustice. Look, there's even the coat of arms on it of the ones whose property you are. The king. The pharaoh. Well, there he is, King George VI and the Freemason, as I told you, who uh, set Mr. Winston Churchill, the uh, aristocratic warmonger and mass murderer who started World War II. He set him in place. He was not elected by the people. And every American president has one British king as their ancestor. So the pharaohs became the aristocracy. And the aristocracy became Freemasonry, ruling through the system of democratorship, where we, the sheeple, can vote for one of them out of a bunch of other pharaohs. It says in the Bible that the pharaoh and his army disappeared in the sea. They disappeared in the sea of peoples and are amongst us. Ah, in pharaonic means pregnant and ri means a son, as in the word aristocracy, aristocracy. 
meaning the sun gave birth to them. They came from elsewhere. This is why the aristocratic led Nazis came up with the word Aryan, Arish, Arion, as in aristocratic, aristocratic. Uh, look, here we can see it. This is the, uh, the King of England. There he is, the Freemason. They all are. That's how they control us today. Nice, isn't it? We are just as slaves as we've always been. Now they're hiding. In the Middle Ages, we were owned by kings and queens, earls and counts, barons and lords, Tsars, dukes, duchesses, countesses, baronesses, archdukes, who had their knights and templars working as their police force for them to control the sheeple. Just as it is today, nothing has really changed. Or does anyone think they just disappeared like that? They were parasiting on the people and the workers who had to give taxes and percentage of wheat, vegetables and cattle. And many times the sheep starved to death in winter after a bad harvest. While these parasites and pharaohs were partying in the castle, drunk of the wine they had stolen, their bellies well fed with robbed food, that should have been for all those hungry children. And they had their beds warmed up with young virgins of the sheeple due to the prime noctus, droit de cuissage, droit du seigneur, or first right. Allowing these parasites to grab the newly wed bride on the very night of her wedding to come and lay with the lord and master thus spreading the pharaonic para genetics all over. Yes, the word pharaoh etymologically drew rise from two demotic words, per and a, meaning the big house. The big royal house of the pharaonic royal bloodline. As my dear friend William Morgan, 1776, so cleverly discovered that Genesis actually means the gene of Isis. And Geneva in the octagon base, Gene of Eve, being one and the same one. I'm so glad my pupils are getting smarter than me, so I can retire soon. Just as the pharaohs never disappeared, the nobility never lost their power either. The word aristocracy is pharaonic. Aristocracy. A means big or pregnant. And ri means the sun, meaning those who come from the sun. Just as the Aryans, the Indo-Germanic nobility and upper class, Aryan is from Arion, as in aristocracy, which means that those who came from the sun with their blue blood and all their ruling, and they still do. Don't be mistaken. And here at this royal ball, well... We can see the pharaoh here, so you know, that's where they came from, it's the same, that's just the same. And today, children disappear and they get raped, tortured, sacrificed and murdered in castles like Amerois in Belgium and Sotou in uh, Luxembourg and many other places as the Bohemian Grove by very organized gangs like the Dutroux gang and by Fourniri whose name indicates to deliver the king Fourni Roi with our children in this case. The nobility always were into Satanism and other dark mystical practices of their pharaonic ancestors as ritual child sacrifice. They always did and they always will, protected by the knights, police 
and authorities. In the 18th century there was Marquis de Sade, where the word sadism actually comes from. So I don't have to tell you what his favorite pastime hobbies were about. Napoleon Bonaparte finally put him in prison for 10 years after his arrest in 1801 and he died in 1814. Prince Charles publicly admitted in 2011 that he's a descendant of the Prince of Wallachia or Vlad Dracul, the Impaler of Transylvania as we know him. He lived from 1431 till 1476 and his favorite hobbies were torture and impaling. Impaling means having implanted a stick up yours, coming up from the mouth and then set up in the ground vertically, being his interpretation of a crucifixion. Well, look at the eight-pointed star on his forehead. That's octagon. Right? Nobility. He did this to 100,000 people, mostly Saxons, and even the Ottoman Muslim army turned around and went back when they came to a forest of 20,000 impaled. From 1730 to 1801 we had the Russian nobility under the Tsar with Darya Nikolaevna Saltikova torturing and murdering at least 200 people. This is the nobility folks. They always did it and they never stopped doing it. From 1560 to 1614, Countess Erzebet Batori of the Hungarian nobility, also called the Blood Count Countess, tortured and murdered 650 virgins of the Shebor. Because she believed that bathing in a virgin's blood would keep her young forever, she and her fellow aristocrats even constructed an ingenious metal structure in which the victims could bleed to death, still being alive and sadistically tortured on the way. So this is the coat of arms of the royal Batori, of the, uh, the blood counters. Ex-president Sarkozy of France comes from the Hungarian aristocracy being related to the blood counters, as the pharaonic part Sar in his name means king in Demotic. And this is the Blood Castle where she was imprisoned in 1610 only because the Sheeple started an uprising after 650 of their virgins disappeared. So it took the Sheeple 650 victims to act. How typical! The American shape will even need more. 3,000 victims sacrificed at 9-11 for another liquid and still counting. The Americans act big, martial and spartanic at the shooting range with the best goodies you can imagine, waiting though to be hauled up for the slaughterhouse without ever having used their goodies. And watch here, we can see the airplane going through concrete and steel and coming out on the other side intact, as if nothing has happened. Oh, they made a big mistake here. Baron Gilles de Ré was an aristocratic French serial killer who lived from 1404 to 1440 who sodomized, tortured and murdered at least 600 boys and girls from the age of 6 to 18, together with his accomplices Poitou and Henri. He used to laugh seeing his victims dying while he opened up their stomachs, admiring their intestines, a thing he was fascinated with. And uh, look at this, this is his seal of his royal house of Duray and here we can see the uh, the Templars cross just on the Swiss army knife the same and this is just the tip of the iceberg because most cases are not known because the Schapel 
and stupid white race couldn't even read or write to document it all. So the two parasites in society were, and still are, the aristocracy and the ecclesiastical orders of the priests of Amun, who never worked and always lived of the blood of others, in some cases even literally. Over the years and centuries these parasites grew fat, never hungered, having great parties with music and troubadour, and just reproducing like rabbits in between the parties. And all descendants wanted to be king or queen and have the castles. So wars broke out between them, which the sheeple had to fight out. Nice haircut. Oh, what a legs. And what a nice shoes. And once a king, he wanted to stay king forever. And then even handed over to his pedigree. So rivalry started. And after hundreds of years, wars between the kingdoms and second son aristocracy. As the Templars, etc. They finally came together and decided to elect a king by the stupid sheeple for four years only. And so democracy started. And due to the increasing revolts, revolutions and uprisings of hungry peasants, the parasites of the nobility decided to go underground in Freemason lodges, divided in 33 degrees, indicating in fact the degree of pharaonic genes of the noble bloodlines in their veins. That's why Bernhard, the SS Prince of Darkness, founded the Bilderberger, who stand, due to their pure pharaonic blood, even over the usual 33 degrees of pharaonic percentage. It's like a bottle of whiskey, you know, like having 33 degrees of alcohol in it, and they have 33 degrees of pharaonic genetics. And don't think that Kate Middleton Cosima and the girls of the so-called civil marriages with the nobility don't have a certain degree of pharaonic bloodline in their veins. They all have. There are just so many of them nowadays hiding amongst us and all trying to get a key position with the authorities where they can parasite on humanity without working a single day. So the pharaohs never went away, they became the aristocracy and the nobility. And the nobility never lost power and they never really went away. They became, they rule through their politicians and Freemason lodges. So it's still the pharaohs ruling, I'm, I've been telling you for years. All the politicians are descendants of the nobility and aristocracy of the Middle Ages who went into hiding motors in Freemason lodges. That's why they want more and more police, because there are more and more of them who want to be a knight and do nothing. They protect child molesters and could stop drugs and prostitution within 24 hours, but it is them as well, earning money with organized crime at the expense of our children. Here you can see the drug dealers all hanging around in Bern next to the police station where they feel the most safe. I filmed this in 2011 with a mini DV so the quality is not that good. I would like to do it again but I can't go out uh, alone and especially in, in the evening or in the night. Uh, they're selling all these drugs to our children and the police are doing absolutely nothing. Instead of that, they terrorize me and my family and um, they terrorize innocent uh, defenseless families and come with a, uh, a terrorist police. Can you imagine? While well, they're doing nothing here. There they are. They all went and later on they even aggressed us. Um, because I was, they, they, they saw I was filming. We had to get out very, very quickly. They came, you know, 
uh, they hit on the car I was with a guy, a German bloke. Next to the police station in Bern, they do nothing. It's them controlling the drugs trade. The authorities, the police, the politicians, it's them controlling the drugs trade, I tell you. And they want to get rid of kids who have a potential to, um, to think for themselves. This is why King Philip of France, Philippe le Bel, chased the Templars because they and their new system of democracy through Freemasonry endangered his heir to the throne and the ancient order of things that only the firstborn had a right to the throne and not the second, third or fourth son as the Templars were in fact. So burning the Templars by the French king was nothing else than it, as an in uh, internal war between them. But now they've set it all aside and uh, recognizing that they have all the Pharaonic uh, bloodline and um, I mean there's enough to share. Uh, and they found that Switzerland, they are in peace now against us. And the Templars needed a base where they speak all the important European languages so they founded Octagon Switzerland which is now the base of all pharaohs, politicians, Freemasons, um, drug trafficking and nobility who put aside their corruption money on a secret Swiss account. And here we can see the UBS with the three sixes in it and the, uh, three, ti the three times the V symbol. And um, I told you, uh, they call it the beast. As you can see here, this is the beast. Just as they have the bear in the coat of arms in the capital of Octogon, um, UBS is the beast and they control the money. And they have the 666. See my other films. Even Kim Jong-un, North Korea's pharaoh, went to school in Switzerland, Liebefeld, 10 minutes away from where we live. Now why would a country that despises the West send their next pharaoh in the very heart of the very same West? He's a pharaoh. They can be Chinese, they can be black, they can be everything. And um, they, they all go to school in Switzerland. Well, the global elite rule the whole world and they all send their offspring to the pharaonic octogon to a boarding school for the elite where they get taught some more things as in a normal school for the sheeple. So here's Kim Jong in his uh, Swiss school uh, with Swiss children in, um, in Lieberfeld. There he is. He was in an international school before, and then he went to a normal school. Yeah. And if Jews say they will rule the world, this indicates that they don't rule yet. As simple as that. So they're not the ones we're looking for. As Christianity says the very same thing, that Christ will rule. And so say the Muslims, that Islam will rule the world. They all claim the very same thing. What a funny bunch our real pharaonic masters and rulers might think. And in the 1920s the German people were starving. So they founded the NSDAP which was a workers party for and by the people. Which was very soon infiltrated by the nobility and Hitler turning the NSDAP a workers party into a aristocratic led gang where their members carried the von word in their names. The official turning point was 1934, the night of the long knives, where the last delegates of the workers and the German people were murdered by the pharaohs and their nobility. So you understand that Graf von Stauffenberg never put a bomb on the Hitler's table. He just betrayed the movement of July the 20th, where real German officers wanted to finish the Nazi dictatorship over their people. 
I mean, if they would have wanted to kill Mr. Hitler, they could have done it easily, but it just needed a sacrifice. Uh, on the right hand side is his, um, his mother in law, born Freyin von Stackelberg. Freyin, that means he was free and not a slave as the sheeple. And her name was, when she, after she married, Freifrau Anna von Leichenfeld. Freifrau, that means she's a free woman. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? So on the, on the left hand side, we can see. Um, so here we can see um, Stauffenberg with his, uh, with his wife. Funny enough, she looks like, uh, like Merkel. Who knows? It's all the same bloodline anyway. So and this is the mother of uh, Stauffenberg's wife. Well, I mean, that, that, that is not German. This is not German. This is pharaonic. This is pharaonic. And look at the long pharaonic hands. Look at it, like Obama. And here, Oh, Fleur de Lis. That's the Lotus of the Nile. They're all pharaohs. So people should organize in four men groups only because everything gets infiltrated. I mean, look at what they did in Auschwitz and the other concentration camps. This is the same kind of satanic, sadistic cruelty as the nobility always did to the Europeans and all other peoples of the world. It's them all right, the pharaohs and their octagon base in the mountains. And look, they even, the nobility in power, they even brought back one of their favorite instruments of torture. Waterboarding. It already existed in the Middle Ages. Look at it. It came back. It's them all right. They did it then and they still do it today. The Americans fought against the British Crown who then set up the Americans against each other and then took over power again through secret Freemason lodges of the very same aristoc aristocracy as that crown they fought before, now smiling and telling everyone what he or she wants to hear. There's nothing left of the freedom they fought for, nothing. The nobility and the crown is ruling again. They set the Americans up against each other through the, uh, the Civil War and then they took power again. Divide and rule. Now, just as, as they want to put up Islam against the Americans, it's still the same thing. Divide and rule. Uh, it was all for nothing. I've seen with my own eyes and I heard it with my own ears how the Swiss police and the Justice Department of Nazi Switzerland lie. Where the Swiss Nazis just invent things so they can terrorize me and my family over a period of a long 16 years. They lie. These authorities of the pharaonic aristocracy, they lie about 9-11. They lie about World War II and they lie about these two Chechen kids who love the US. This is the enemy of mankind, the same pharaonic aristocracy and their Freemason lodges, their politicians and judiciary and their same knights in the police and octagon army. And if humanity will not learn to unite very soon, Mankind and the whole earth will lose as a whole. Like in the Middle Ages, they still are our masters and owners. And they own us by forcing us to have a number and show them identification, proving they own us. Just like cattle having a number punched in the ear or under the skin somewhere. This is where the aristocracy, the kings and queens and nobility, they dreamt of in the Middle Ages. And now they perfectly have it. They just have to conceal it from us, or not even that. 
There are no more valors where families live in poverty and a man can marry another man and even adopt a baby as they voted in France like three weeks ago. Being not the product of their unholy union. They can't reproduce themselves, but still, there are more and more of them. Well, that's no wonder when defenseless babies have to grow up with them. Once they came along with great armies as masons and built roads, aqueducts and castles. And now they still call themselves masons. Though the real work being done by their sheeple, so they're free with their masons. This is Castel del Monte in an octagonal shape. This is octagon with the triangle of the masons at the entrance. They videotape us everywhere as a shepherd keeping an eye on his cattle and we have to carry documents with a picture on it to show the ownership by them owning us. The aristocracy owns us just as in the Middle Ages. 30 million Russians starved to death due to this aristocratic parasite called the Tsars, leading to uprisings and revolutions, just as elsewhere. So the aristocracy had to hide in secrecy. So this means they are afraid of us, very, very afraid. And maybe we still have a tiny little chance left. See the Pharaoh show for more. And see Octagon the Empire of Darkness for more. The Second World War started on September the 1st, 1939 with Hitler's attack on Poland. Here with Swiss crosses on the German tanks. Thus, in fact, Hitler declaring war on England and France. Because he knew perfectly well that Poland had a defensive treaty with France and England. So on September 3, 1939, England and France officially had to acknowledge Hitler's declaration of war. But then a very strange thing happened. All warring parties waited for almost a whole year until May 10th of the next year, 1940. This eight-month period of the Second World War is called the Phony War, or in French, La Drôle de Guerre. Now, why is this? This is very important to understand who really is behind the Second World War. Well, I'll tell you why. The pharaohs of the aristocracy and the Swiss Templars waited almost a year to eliminate Britain's Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain a man of peace who followed the appeasement politics. Well, you can see Mr. Hitler smiling and acting here. And they finally did get rid of him by poisoning him so they could put their aristocratic warmonger in place to have this pharaonic war go on. So, on May 10th, 1940, the very sick and dying Neville Chamberlain had to resign and the world war could start. Only a few hours after he resigned and the pharaonic aristocratic Mr. Churchill was set in place. And the uh, democratically elected Prime Minister of Britain Neville Chamberlain and Man of Peace died before the year was over, just a few months later of cancer and having had a few drinks too much with the wrong people. So on the very day of the second and real beginning of the Second World War, Winston Churchill was not elected democratically, but was assigned by King George VI as their aristocratic leader for the pharaohs. Churchill was born at Blenheim Palace, where his father was the Duke of Marlborough. Well, here we can see the obelisk of Blenheim Palace. Any more questions? The obelisk is the symbol of the pharaonic domination. And here's Blenheim Palace, where Mr. Churchill was born. A man of the people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no way. 
Well, here's Le Salon in Blenheim Palace, where Mr. Churchill is from. Yeah, okay. And young Winston loved concentration camps where he had 28,000 Boer women and mostly children murdered in South Africa during the Boer Wars. And you can see the young Lizzie van Zeil, the young uh, Boer child. She died, she got murdered together with 28,000 other ones. So this is how the Brits, they won the, uh, the war against the Boers. Well, of course, it's all pharaonic. It's the aristocracy. They always did this and they always will. In the Second World War, in South Africa, um, now they're doing it in uh, Iraq and all over. It's the aristocracy and they're pharaonic. And because of Mr. Churchill's old love for concentration camps, he never had the railroads to Auschwitz bombed. Because the worldwide aristocracy of the pharaohs and the Nazi Templars from Switzerland had decided that the Jews had to go due to their part in the Russian Revolution, communism and the elimination of the Tsar family who were descended of equally pharaonic bloodlines as the rest of the gang. So in every one of the countries, Britain, Germany and the US, this pharaonic aristocracy and the Freemasons were ruling and the war against the Russian people and against the Jews could begin in order to revenge the Russian revolution and the killing of the Tsars, where the word Tsar is of the pharaonic word for a king, as in a sarcophagus, which is a box to put the king in when he's dead. See the pharaoh show. This is why Rudolf Hess flew to the Duke of Hamilton aristocracy to stop the war. Now why would someone from a NSDAP workers party ask the aristocracy for help? Huh? Well, and look what the Duke did. Well, he just betrayed him. The Duke didn't want any peace. Right? The Duke was just smiling and pretending to be nice to Mr. Rudolf Hess. But when it really came to it, he just betrayed him and he showed who he really was, a pharaoh. This is why Hitler had the English army escape to, in Dunkirk. And why the Luftwaffe never bombed Buckingham Palace or any other aristocratic aim. This near miss here is just a deliberate false flag publicity hit so they could celebrate themselves as heroes standing side by side with the British people. Yeah, well, it pro probably exploded in the night when everybody was hiding, didn't it, eh? And also the SS Prince of Darkness of the Bilderberg nobility, Mr. Bernard, was hiding in England. Here we can see him together with some of his SS friends on the other side. Oh yeah, Mr. Bernhard. The connection with the SS and the, and the Royals. I regret very much having told all this to Diana Spencer because she entrusted all this to the wrong people as well, as she was always looking for the best in people. And here she is walking around with the Octogon. So, she knew about Octagon, I can tell you that. I know they'll do me too eventually. Thank you YouTube and thank you US First Amendment. Because here in Switzerland, in this Nazi dictatorship, the First Amendment is one of the things they hate most. I can tell you that. On June 22nd, 2013, a Saxon from Germany came visit me and offered me a five Reichsmark Nazi silver coin from his grandfather from 1934, with swastikas on it and all, as a present to me. So here on the side we can see those typical Nazi letters and uh, it says Gemeinnutz geht vor 
Eigennutz. That means service goes for self, goes before self. Uh, with those arabesques here, it looks like serpents to me. And there's a funny thing in the middle, I think it's a star. And, um, yeah, so I'll show that again. So these were those typical Nazi mottos, you know, like Arbeit macht frei, meaning work makes you free, you know, which is a nice motto for the slaves constructing the pyramids or the ones in uh, Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau, you know, um, having to work like pharaonic slaves and then die. Um, these are uh, slogans real typical for the Nazis and the pharaohs. Hitler and the Nazis first used his motto on February 24th, 1920 in a National Socialist Rally in Munich. On one side it shows some swastikas of uh, pharaonic origin. And it says Deutsches Reich, meaning the German Empire. And it shows the Roman pharaonic eagle of Ma'at. And it says 1934, five Reichsmark, five marks of the German Empire. Reich, it means empire. And if I turn it around, it shows at the place where the tail is of Ma'at. It shows the uh, fleur de lis which is a symbol of the uh, the aristocracy and it is it represents the uh, the pharaonic lotus on the river Nile it does and on the flip side it uh, shows an obelisk like a uh, church yeah. where it says 21st of March there's the Triangle of the Freemasons. You see? It shows an obelisk-like church called Die Garnisonskirche, or Church of the Garnison, which is a very funny name for a church, insinuating the church as a garnison or an army and Christianity as a war uh, against humanity and if you consider the Horus matrix and reason for all these wars it does fit connected to this church of wars it says March 21st 1933 with two swastikas around it around 1933 as to honor the year of the beast with pharaonic symbols March 21st is the date on which Hitler's rise to power was celebrated after he became the German Chancellor on January 30th, 1933. It's called the Day of Potsdam, the Tag von Potsdam. Just as it's called the Day of Potsdam commemoration coin. Here, Mr. Hitler is somewhere in here on the day of Potsdam uh, where the obelisk is uh, shaking hands with uh, Mr. von Hindenburg and uh, on the left side there is the Nikolai church which is an evangelic church with an obelisk you see that was very important so normally the inauguration of a German Chancellor should have taken place in the German Reichstag in Berlin but as the pharaonic German aristocracy wanted it to take place in Potsdam, near Berlin, and the very heart of the Prussian monarchy with many obelisks around for a pharaonic ritual as in the old days along the River Nile. 
they deliberately burned down the Reichstag on the night of February 27 till the 28th to have a good reason for not having their man and reincarnated Pharaoh inaugurated under the powers of the German people at the very symbol of the German democracy. And for the Reichstag uh, fire arson, they had their Patsy ready. Uh, here he is, Mr. van der Lubbe. And um, just as uh, Lee Harvey, the Patsy, or these uh, 19 Muslims at 9-11, well, they always have it ready. And of course, octagon of the Templars, they are aristocratic, just as uh, the, the main drive behind the Nazis, and they were the main drive, as here in Potsdam, and the reason for the uh, Reichstag's fire um, is the aristocracy, and they are pharaonic, and they went into hiding in Freemason lodges. They're the ones, all right. And Switzerland Octagon is their biggest base. But under the pharaonic magic of the imperial aristocracy, at their main church next to the castle of Sans Souci, or the No Worries Castle, as the French word indicates, where not even the name is German, and neither the idea of two world wars and the extermination of the Jews was in fact a German idea. It was aristocratic, pharaonic. So this obelisk here is standing at the very entrance of the Sans Souci Castle, which is all next to each other the um, uh, where Hitler was inaugurated and where he, he shook the hands with the uh, the former uh, Hindenburg uh, Chancellor uh, it was a pharaonic ritual uh, it really was and I show you some more things so here we can see the Garnison's church on uh, on my coin here with the entrance here with some uh, Nazi eagles on it and it, it's full of uh, hieroglyphs here it's really ancient so there are at least four obelisks and probably many more around this place where Hitler was inaugurated by the aristocracy and I'm going to show you what's inside this church and um, it's real horrible the aristocracy got their fingerprints all over the Nazi movement and the Second World War. And I know why. So here's the uh, Sans Souci or No Worries Castle. Well, you can see you won't have any worries here. Of uh, Frederick the Great. And he is in fact buried in this church which is on the silver Nazi coin. And this is the real reason uh, why the uh, the Garnison's church is on this coin. And this castle, it, it's all very near, in a few minutes walk, just next to this Garnison's church, the place where all the obelisks are, where Hitler was uh, inaugura inaugurated in Potsdam, which is not in Berlin, and is not the Reichstag, where he should have been inaugurated, why is the real reason? The aristocracy. And look at all the obelisks. All the trees look like obelisks. Uh, here it's, it's really too much. It's full with pharaonic stuff here. Inside and outside. I just show you a couple of things. But it's, this is pharaonic. And this is uh, the drive behind the Nazis and the Second World War. That's, that's the ones who did it. So uh, here inside the castle, it's it's amazing. Look at it. We can see two times the sun hieroglyph. Here it is, or many more times probably. There it is, and here. And uh, of course, their base is Octagon, as I told you before, Switzerland. That's their base, where all the money is, where it's a safe place, and all the caves and the mountains. That's their base. But this is part of it. This is part of it, and uh, the place where um, Potsdam is, it's, uh, it's full of lakes, a lot of water, like in the old times at the River Nile, so, well, that's why they burned down the Reichstag. 
And on that very day, when Hitler shook hands with von Hindenburg, another aristocrat of pharaonic descent, the Heimtücke Gesetz or the German Patriot Act was put in power on the day before, on March 20th, 1933, the opening of the first concentration camp Dachau near Munich. So this coin celebrates the true beginning of the aristocratic Nazi dictatorship of the pharaohs from Octogon. Just as the National Socialist Movement was a workers' union from the people, of which all the real German leaders were murdered by Hitler and his aristocrats during the Night of the Long Knives in 1934. After that, it was all led by guys with a von in front of their names, all arist aristocrats. Why March 21st? Because that was the very same date of the first German Reichstag of the German aristocratic empire on March 21st, 1871. This Nazi war church, uh, which is called the Garnison's Church, is the church of the pharaonic aristocracy. They had been visited by all the royals throughout history as Tsar Alexander I, Napoleon Bonaparte, whom you can see here, visiting the grave of uh, Frederick the, uh, the Great. And Emperor Frederick the Great has even been buried in the church. Just look at the Freemason checkboard configuration. <clears throat> And Frederick the Great, or Friedrich der Große, Friedrich der Zweite, Friedrich the Second, he was a mason indeed. He spoke only French, I don't know if he could even speak German, and the Germans called him Fritz the Faggot for his homo activities with Mr. Fredersdorf, for example, and with many others. And uh, here he was buried after the war, because the uh, the war church, the the Garnison's church, was destroyed after the Second World War. So they put his remains uh, after the war in this lovely castle here. It's called the Hohenzollern Castle. The Emperor Frederick the Great lived from 1712 until 1786. And he died at the No Worries Castle, Sans Souci, just next door. When well, I look at the, the marvelous octagon sign he's having on his breast, I'd say it's, uh, it's a London copper. Look at the badge. Here he is. This is octagon police. That's them, all right. They are the knights for the, uh, for the aristocracy. It has a very funny sign inside. I can't really see what it is. The Emperor was raised by a Swiss from Octogon called Nicolas de Begelin. Faggot Fritz and the Swissy from Octogon. I told you so, the Swiss always have their fingers in it, somehow. And sometimes even something more than just a finger. Fritz the Faggot ruled from 1740 until 1786, almost 50, 50 years of endless Prussian wars. So here we can read what kind of a violent, aggressive and sick person he was. Oh, Fritz the Faggot also was an active anti-Semit, as the entire pharaonic aristocracy is. Therefore, Rudolf Hess, the second Nazi of this aristocratic Nazi dictatorship, gave Hitler a large pile of anti-Semitic correspondence by Fritz the Faggot, being one of the reasons, together with, the, with that other one, for Hitler having just one picture at the wall of the Führer bunker. Yes. Fritz the faggot was on the wall. 
Hitler was a very big admirer of uh, Frederick the Great. Well, let's call him Frederick the Great for, you know. Well, here's the painting of uh, Frederick the Great or Fritz the Faggot, whatever, that Mr. Hitler had in the Führer bunker. Every, in, in every one of his offices, he had the uh, the painting of uh, Frederick the Great. Well, two mass murderers. There are indeed a lot of rumours indicating that Hitler himself was a queer. Homo Hitler and faggot Fritz. What a lovely couple from hell. And this unholy practice is indeed widespread within the aristocracy and the pharaohs, the ancestors. But Hitler was in fact a highly pharaonic initiate into the practices of sexual sublimination and its transformation of its earthbound energies into spiritual abilities and in this very case on the altar of evil. And here also in Berlin is the uh, the grave of the successor of Frederick the Great. His name is Frederick William II. <laughs> he was also a uh, a Freemason Pharaoh. These were the friends of Mr. Hitler. He was one of them. Well, let's pretend he was Frederick the Great, who was a grandson of George the First of the British Empire, just as every US president is related to just one English king, apparently, except President Van Buren. Oh yes, the pharaonic aristocracy rules all right. Octagon is their base and the true, the worldwide octagon blue army, their knights. Just as uh, Frederick the Great has the, uh, the octagon sign uh, on his breast, as I showed you before. So these American people found out that all the US presidents, they are related to just one king who lived uh, in the 12th century. <laughs> we are ruled by Octagon and the aristocracy who are pharaonic and who are hiding in Freemasonry lodges uh, under the, uh, the um, democracy banner. <laughs> The pharaohs never disappeared and became the worldwide aristocracy who never disappeared either and became the Freemasons who rule through a hidden totalitarian system called democracy where the people can just and only vote and pick out one or two out of a list of other pharaohs and Freemasons who afterwards can do as they please. The nobility had to hide their power into a hidden masonry because there were too many uprisings and revolutions going on against the elite and as we all know from history kings queens and the entire aristocratic system tortured us in dungeons raped our women and had our children starved to death by robbing the entire harvest for the pleasures in the castle so here we can see the pharaonic tower of Atanor, which is a pharaonic name. There are still pharaohs and statues in the gardens here in Italy. And down there below they burn people alive for uh, satanic rituals. They build a whole tower for this. Well, this is the Torigani Tower of Atanor. You see the octagonal shape? Huh? Octagon. There it is. This was especially built um, for alchemy. And the nobility still lives there. Funny, eh? And this is what they did there. And probably still do. This is underneath the tower for alchemy. Whoa. 
and uh, the Marquis, so the aristocracy of Torrigiano, where the Atanor is in uh, Florence. They're having this statue in their garden. Well, what do you know? It's all pharaonic, the whole aristocracy, nobility, they are of pharaonic descent. That's why he's having it in his garden, I told you. The ancestors of the aristocracy, the pharaohs from Egypt, did the same things and also practiced satanic ritual sacrifice for any sort of entity with a beast's head on the statue. Here we can see a human sacrifice uh, done in ancient Egypt. And the Templars, who were no monks but they were second or third sons aristocracy, had their Baphomet and founded their kingdom in the Alps called Octogon, Switzerland. Today, the descendants of the pharaoh's nobility and the equally aristocratic Templars come together in their secret Freemason lodges where they still rule the world and logically never stop doing their ancient satanic practices as what they call slow death lift and other tortures and ab abominations. If someone dies, normally his or her soul instantly leaves the body to the home of souls and there's almost nothing that can come in between that process except when the process of dying is being slowed down over many hours or sometimes even many days mostly using code O2T torture which is widely spread in Swiss torture detention centers as a whole being added by a ceremony with pharaonic incantations for the sacrifice to a certain deity or and some goal which might be a political issue of large importance uh, leading to the eventual aim well here we can see the lifting of the soul under torture um, the um, the bird here is the uh, is the soul being lifted out here. There, there you go. Lifted out. And here we can see the symbol of the Templars. There, on the uh, um, the uh, vases, which is called the canopy, where the soul goes in. And here you can see it again. It's all it's all over on um, on the tanks in Iraq, the U.S. tanks and code O2T is the deprivation of oxygen to a near life threatening degree, which is the easiest to regulate in order to create slow death lift. So I'll just. Punch pause if you want to read it. There you go. Just punch pause. This is what they're doing in Switzerland. The home of the Templars, Octogon. The subject is laid on a pharaonic Freemason altar and tied to it. Then the mouth is taped and the sub subject strangled with an ancient thousands of year, years old Egyptian belt. Then the person gets ritually strangled which is interrupted every time just before death and when a state of unconsciousness is reached then restarted when consciousness is back then repeated over and over again where together with fear, stress, ritual incantations and physical fatigue the subject will be entirely worn out and with no more physical nor mental resistance. That's why they prefer babies or young children because they don't have any resistance. It's a lot easier. And this is a real middle age um, thing here. So when after hours or even days the end of the process is getting nearer the subject will be led into the sphere between life and death where the gap 
through the long extended process of dying, the soul can be lifted out and be used for various black practices, as mentioned before. So when I read in the newspaper that Marie Schluchter, who was murdered on May 13th, 2013, in Octogon, Switzerland, the home of the Templars, was strangled with a belt, with a mouth taped, not raped or abused of, of otherwise, and her face misformed into a grim expression of fear and terror, then I knew enough. You see, this bloke here, the Tolland man, still has the rope around his neck. This was a pharaonic ritual murder um, in Europe. It should be obvious that the strangling of a psychopathic maniac in rage hardly needs any additional tape over the mouth to prevent you from shouting. Nor would a madman, as Claude Dubois is being pictured in the media, while he's strangling the girl, liberates both hands to cut off the tape and then apply it in the middle of a psychotic rage. I mean, if you're being strangled, I mean, you can't shout anyway, can you now? It's a lie. So it says in the uh, French-speaking newspaper that... Um, her mouth was taped and uh, she was strangled. Well, just think about it, analyze it, folks. They will probably suicide the designated killer within the course of a few days or a few weeks, so he can never speak out anymore. Sending the dogs into the nearest two or three Freemason lodges would solve the case immediately. But this will never happen and instead they will probably send me the Swiss Nazi police again. Although this video has been published under the laws of the US First Amendment of at Palo Alto, California, where the YouTube server is, therefore not under the jurisdiction of any Swiss laws at all. But the Swiss Nazi Justice Department doesn't care about any laws and violates them all both their own laws and the international agreements. This whole country and its horrific history are built upon lies and crime against humanity. And Octogon is building three large concentration camps at the moment for immigrants, at this very moment, for which they need more authority clearance to fill them up with the false flag psyop murder case of a young woman who was adopted from Madagascar when she was only two years old in exchange for a better future her real parents gave her away to octagon of the Templars the base of all evil if she would have stayed in Madagascar she would still be alive and singing on YouTube over there it's quite rare, but sometimes the pharaoh's lovers, as Lady Diana or John F. Kennedy, and then they have to die in a sacrificial way, including an obelisk, as the ones on the cemetery. Dealey Plessa, where Kennedy got trapped, is an open Freemason temple with a water ba basin for Isis. The obelisk at Dealey Plaza for Osiris has 14 parts because his body got cut into 14 parts by Seton. And the uh, construction of this particular set of roads forms the head of Osiris. Well, there it is again, as on Dili Plaza. It even has the straight line in the middle as uh, Dili Plaza, the, the, the roads where uh, Kennedy was trapped. It's all related. And there it is again. You recognize it? Alma is the Italian word for soul. So in the tunnel of the souls, or tunnel d'Alma, and in the vicinity of obelisks, as the one nearby at Place de la Concorde, 
Lady Diana was sacrificed in Paris from Per Isis, the house of Isis. Where the river Seine stands for Isis and even Le Bassin de Octogon of the Templars is nearby. And this is probably the place where they, uh, where she died. So this is Paris, the river, and here's the tunnel where she died. Here's the nearest hospital, which would have been like uh, 20 seconds away. And um, here's the obelisk, Place de la Concorde. And here is Octogon, Le Bassin d'Octogon. And this is where she died. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt. The Mercedes plowed into the 13th pillar and was remote controlled through the Boston brakes. And they could have taken her to the Alma Clinic only 20 seconds away, where they have scanners, surgery, gynecology and the rest. A heavy powerful car is the Mercedes Limousine needs a hydraulic power steering being manipulated electronically through the central electronic box called the car's brains just as the accelerator and the brakes, which can be very easily replaced with a remote control system as in the white Fiat Uno following the Merc. The Hotel Ritz Merc was stolen a few weeks before and found again nice and polished with the keys inside and safety belts not working. Mercedes Germany couldn't believe passengers died in a car designed for safety and wanted to examine it. Authorities refused and ordered the entire car to a demolition plant. Sometimes some pharaohs love humanity. Octagon did it. Octogon. And this is what left of the uh, the car of Jörg Haider. He was a uh, Austrian politician, and even a uh, the, uh, the the premier, the minister president. And uh, many witnesses in the Dutroux du case, uh, they had car accidents, as in 9-11 uh, witnesses had car accidents. Well, that's Boston brakes. So always check your hand brakes and your safety belts before uh, going off with the car. And if they don't work, uh, something is very wrong. See the Pharaoh show for more. And see Octogon the Empire of Darkness for more. In the Middle Ages we were owned by the aristocracy and the clergy who tortured us, took our food in the form of taxes so we had to see our children starve while our masters partied in their castles raping our women and spreading their pharaonic genetics then they slowly disappeared into hiding through Freemason lodges. And we can see this unholy couple on YouTube today who never talk about what the aristocracy and the clergy have done to us. Well, do we all see the Swiss cross here? Well, this is Octogon. And with the symbol of a uh, telephone company in it. Octogon rules, I tell you. One of them represents our masters of the aristocracy and calls himself the Duke. Dr. David Duke. And I can tell you why the swans behind him. And the other one represents the church and calls himself Brother Nathaniel and his real name is Milton Kepner. Well watch his gloves, a white one and a black one. Funny eh? The same old couple from the dark ages, nobility and the church or like on YouTube, dukes and priests. And of course they never tell us about our real masters, dukes and priests. If you understand, it's so obvious. Well, it says Senza Blackwater. 
Schwarzwasser. Sensor, that means the, the mower, like Mr. Death. There's the bear. There it is. So here it says, black water. That's where it's from. And the mercenaries are Swiss. They always were Swiss in the Middle Ages. So the whole idea is from here, believe me. And then they come here to not to pay any more taxes, like Eggies. They're all here. All these mercenary companies are here. It says again, the Blackwater Bridge. Um, yeah, they all have all these mercenaries. It says, before you jump, the, call, the, call the number here. All these mercenary companies, they have a, a letterbox firm. You know, just a letterbox, <laughs> so they don't pay any more taxes. And there it is. And here's going, this is the bridge here. Black water, and here's going down, 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 very deep. There's, you can hear the water. Well, okay. And there we can see still snow in the mountains there. Yeah. And here are the Alps as well. Over there. There it says Grasburg, the grass castle. Well, grass doesn't make any sense. It must have been an L, like Grail's Castle. There it is. So I'm looking for the Grail's Castle. And uh, here is a, a cave uh, where we go through. And I hope we find it. In German, the thing is called Grasburg, it means grass, but it doesn't make any sense for a castle. Burg, it means a castle. So here's the cave. It's going all through the mountain here. So, let's have a look. Oh, it looks like the wrong cave here. This is not leading any further. Well, let's go and find for the next one. Maybe there. Now, that was the cave. Here in Switzerland, in the canton of Bern, that means the bear, as John saw it. Well, these are the worst criminals you can imagine. And the bear has also black water in their logo. And this is black water here. It's called Schwarzwasser. So well, let's hope we find the cave now. I don't think it's that way. I think it's here. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's the cave. We're going all through the mountains here. Oh, get my flashlight. Down with Octogon and the Swiss banks who rob of the poor people so the rich can get richer and the poor poorer. And they wage all these wars and finance Adolf Hitler and finance the destruction of Europe and the European people. Down with Switzerland and Octogon. Freedom for the world. Okay? Okay, there we go. Into the cave. I hope we get out from the other side to the Grailsburg, the Grails Castle. And actually the Swiss, they were the mercenaries in the Middle Ages. After the country was uh, founded by the Templars uh, in 1291 after the Crusades, see the Pharaoh show. Uh, Yeah, well, it looks good. Uh, all over Europe, we saw suddenly mercenaries all over.
Well, it's a long cave, as we can see. I I switch off the I switch off the camera. I was going to get boring, and I'll show it at the other end. Okay. Well, it looks like we're at the end of the cave. There it is. So I turn it off because it's boring for you guys. Just walking through caves. The Swiss caves, yeah. Maybe find some Hitler gold, probably. Okay, there we are, the end of the cave where the black water is and the Swiss mercenaries. By the way, they all have their companies Swiss based because they don't pay any taxes here. Uh, like Eggies, I know they are in Basel, the British Eggies, that's A E G I S, some Greek word. So there we are at the other side. Oh, there we got Isis chair. Look at it. Look at it. Sisters of Isis, they're here. It's quite dripping here. So let's go and find the Grail's Castle. Let's go. Hast du es noch weg da, nach hinten? Oh, even some people have the beer here, they're so rich. They leave a full beer, look at it, they're so rich here. They're gonna fall soon, very soon. Then it's the end of their Swiss arrogance. Then they're gonna cry. No. They make, oh that's an owl. Doing some lizard stuff here, look. The Swiss, they just do some lizard stuff in their free time. Look at that, lizard tail, look at that. Oh yeah man, look. Probably do some uh, rituals here. Oh boy. Oh boy. So this is the tunnel where we came from. So the Grail's Castle, I think it should be there somewhere, or on the other side. Hmm. Well, there it is, I suppose. Look at this. So on the way to the Grailsburg of the uh, of Octogon, the base of the Templars. <coughs> So on the way to the Grailsburg in Octagon, founded by the Templars. So if this country is founded by the Templars, as it is, then it must be the Grailsburg. They just left out the L to camouflage it, as everything in this country is being camouflaged and hid. They hide everything. No, they never finance Adolf Hitler. No, uh, Ceausescu and, and Gaddafi and... Uh, Mubarak, no, they didn't have billions stolen of the people in the in, on Swiss bank accounts. No, they don't steal of the uh, of the Swiss, the American U.S. taxpayer. Of course they don't. This is clean and neutral, neutrality swindle it is. Well, we can already hear the river, uh, the uh, the black water, like the uh, the mercenary black water. And this country was founded by the Templars, as I told you. Ah, oh, there it is. This is the uh, the Grail's Castle. So um, this is the 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 country for mercenaries and um, uh, Blackwater. Well, here's the Blackwater. Here it all came from in the beginning. You know, these guys from Octagon. They already ruled uh, thousands of years before the U.S. was being born and founded. <laughs> and they are ruling in the U.S. I tell you. Oh, I tell you, they do, and that's why they call it Blackwater. So there's the Blackwater, Schwarzwasser. They also have a river here which is called Zenze, which means the mower, as Mr. Death has a mower. You know, this long thing there to mow the grass and uh, things. 
So this is the Grail's Castle here. There's the place to put the horses. Okay. So here's the Grail's, Grail's Castle there. And this is uh, here's the entrance for hikers. Mm -hmm. So there it is, Grasburg. That's the situation at 1500. I don't see very much in the LCD screen because of the sun. Uh, here is the uh, the history. So it really did start up during the cruise or just after the Crusades. I uh, mentioned that 1291 was the last crusade and uh, they founded Switzerland. Watch the Pharaoh show. This is, yeah, oh, you gonna read it? And this is the situation like today, of well, it, it says today. Yeah. So, going up here. Hello, you got coffee ready? There's water on both sides. Uh, here's the black water. Can, do you hear it? Well, the water seems to be uh, on all sides here. So there's the the black castle, the town, the black water. I mean the uh, the origins of the the path from from the First Nations. The origin of the uh, of the US, they lie in Europe, so this is where it all came from. And they took the power with them, the structures and the, their clans, you know. And also the, the Blackwater clan from Switzerland. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's all here. This is the canton of the Bear. Canton, that means the corner in Latin. Uh, there is the Blackwater. The Swiss mercenaries who were really well known for their murderous things they did in the Middle Ages. Uh, it was founded by the Templars, the banks, the Templars treasure, the Grail's castle. And here's the origin. There's no doubt that this is a Templars castle. It was built by the Templars. There's no doubt. It's all here, folks. At the other end of the Grail's castle. Yeah, some more water here. The black water or the the zenza, so the mowing, chopping off hair thing like from uh, Mr. Death himself, like the middle aged thing. It smells like death here. Well the whole Switzerland does actually. It's almost as big as an eagle there. It's called Milan, like the uh, the guided missile. I don't see very much through the LCD screen. So the Milan. You can hear the water.
Now that we're going down here, you get to the uh, the black water. Oh, it is. This is the black water. Schwarzwasser. In the canton of Bern, of the Bear. What John saw in the uh, the revelations. This is the beast. And they have the 666 logo in the UBS bank and the V's. It's all here and they hide it. They're smiling through their teeth. I mean, look at all the proofs I'm giving you. Look at there, for God's sake. All the proofs are here. It's them all right. Let's stand up against this criminal base of Octagon. Switzerland of the Nazis. The Templar Nazis. We can bring peace, peace to this earth if we can finish this off here. They've been doing it for thousands of years. Killing all those Muslims. Financing Adolf Hitler. Killing the Jews. Now the Muslims again. Etc. Etc. Switzerland is the center of drugs, which I showed you in one of my other films. Uh, it's the center of everything. The witches. They, it was a Swiss idea by Heinrich Kramer and Jacob Sprenger to write the Maleus Maleficarum, the witch's hammer. The Ku Klux Klan is from here. I showed it. I gave you the proofs. It's all here. This is Octagon. This is Blackwater. And this is where the name derived from. Don't be mistaken. The Nazi Templars and Octagon, they rule over the Pentagon. Watch my film. Blackwater. Looks green to me. <laughs> now let's have a look at the town of the Black Castle, Schwarzenburg. So next to the Black Water, the Black Knights, the SS, is the Black Castle town. So here's my small Bergen again. There's another war. And here's the Grails Castle. Maybe they also call it the Black Castle because there's the Black Water, there's the small town of uh, Schwarzenburg, which is the Black Castle. Maybe that's several. I don't think there's a Black Castle here. And of course, as we know, the word Grail is from Saint Real, and it means the uh, uh, the royal blood. So the royal blood came here in the Grail's bar castle. They just uh, camouflaged it, as in Octagon. They camouflaged everything, and then they just smiled through their teeth. So um, they just came here. Grail means they came here. They settled here. It's just another word for settling, grail. It's that easy. Uh, phonetically and uh, etymologically, it's interesting to uh, say that the, the Bernese, different from the other cantons here in Switzerland, even the cantons that speak German or Swiss German, they don't pronounce the L. So the word Gralsburg, uh, Grasburg, or Gralsburg as it uh, used to be in German, uh, would be pronounced here Grausburg, because they don't say the L. So it, it, it is then, um, it, it could have been an L there, and it just disappeared because they don't pronounce it, the Bernese, the guys, the guys with the bear claw, as uh, the black water thing. They don't pronounce the L, so this, they thought, well, you know, why, why write, continue to write it down if they don't uh, pronounce it? So, Gralsburg in German would be pronounced by these Bernese, the people of the bear, as uh, Grausburg. Okay, so this is the Gralsburg, uh, where the, the bear are where the word Pharaoh is from, which means the big house, which is not the pyramid, which is, which is rather this, uh, the castle here, or the, uh, the ruins. 
So the Per Ada means the, uh, the big royal house of the pharaohs. And that's the Grail, that's the Per A. The big royal house, they came here and they settled down. That's what the word Grail means, the Grail's castle. Yeah? Oh, like for instance, the German word Verwaltung. Uh, that means the administration. In Bern, that's being pronounced, pronounced as Verwaltig. Anybody hears an L? No, it disappeared. Just as the word in the, in the Grail, it just disappeared. So, you see, quat erat demonstrantum. So today, actually, this place is the, the Grass Castle, Grasburg, because they all come smoking a joint here. And uh, well, in the Middle Ages, at the end of the Crusades, when they built here, uh, there was no grass. Oh no, there were no lawns, no golf places or soccer fields. No way. It was all forest. So the word grass. Uh, it's nonsense. It was grail, which I explained to you before. There's no doubt. And the grail is San Real, the holy blood of the pharaohs, the royal blood of the pharaohs, which came here. This is their base. And this is the grail's castle. Go digging here. Revolution. Down with octagon for mankind and our freedom, okay? Oh, it says shooting ranges. It says free. Oh, they're like shooting here, these Templars of Octagon. So here it says Black Castle. So the town is called Black Castle, like the Black Water. It's just next to the Black Water. There, and you can see the Alps here. There it is. So this little castle here, like it's only 200 years old, in the, uh, the next town to uh, the Grail's castle, which is Schwarzenburg, which is what means the Black Castle, as Blackwater, in the canton of the bear, as John saw it. Well, here's the bear, and here's the symbol of the, uh, there's Blackwater. Well, the Blackwater is next to here, and the, uh, this town is called Black Castle. Yeah, there it is. Well, you want more. And uh, to complete everything here, there's an obelisk with your domination on it. Well, pharaohs are here, boys. They're here, right. The bear is here, the obelisk is here, the black water is here. John is here, the Revelations is here, it all, it all fits together here, it all comes together here. And look how nice and clean it is, you know, oh, so nice and clean. Well, forget it. It is not. Yeah, it has these funny little obelisks here. There's four of them. And the sun. Strange. Joachim and Boas. Black water. See the Pharaoh show for more. And see Octagon the Empire of Darkness for more.